Hello, welcome friends. I hope you're ready to fight. Always. I have my, I have my naughty little son in my lap, hoping oh. that sitting here is enough of a distraction to keep him away from my PC because he went for it a couple, oh God. Oh, and he's exiting. Except he can't fit, ow, Jesus. Okay. Well, I was about to say, at least you'd cause less trouble in your lap, but. I was hoping that might be the case, because the reason he eventually settled down is because he had been continually going for the top of my PC. And now he's exiting the room, which I hope just means that he's done causing trouble for now. How long now Because is? we all know the boy's work is never done. No. So I sent you that thing today. I was like, the second I saw it, I thought, this is Oliver, because that cat was super weird. And it was also white. Yeah, he's a special little boy. Anyway, um, would you like to tell the good folks at home why we started a little bit late today? Is that a, is, is that a story, perhaps? Um, I mean, it's a story. I don't know if it's interesting. So, as I believe I mentioned on the pod just last week, my favorite band, Los Campesinos, released a new album, like, you a week ago it. Friday. So, almost two weeks ago now. And I had pre-ordered it from their site because it came with like, you know, a cassette and a t-shirt and like all this stuff. The thing is, they're in Wales. So it had to come from overseas. And it went through like Belgium and a bunch of places for some reason. But apparently they tried to deliver it here on Monday through the post office, which I did not know about. Apparently it required a signature. So I said... Ah. Yeah, and so they were like, oh, you can scan this code and schedule a redelivery. I'm like, super. So I scheduled it for today. It didn't come. And so I'm like, you know what? I'll just go out to the post office. And yeah, so I, I explained the situation, showed them the tracking number I had, and they were like, oh, they just wrote it down on the back of a piece of paper <laughs> and disappeared into the back for, I don't know how long. It was a very long time. I was just sitting there checking social media, texting people, just, you know. That's what does. Because it was a, a clerk in training and then the guy training him. So there were two of them. And I heard overheard them at one point on the phone back there saying, hey, this package was supposed to come in. You know, blah, blah, blah. we can't find it anywhere. Oh, really? I'll come get it from you. And I was like, oh, excellent. They must be just grabbing it. And that was like another 15 minutes. <laughs> Jeez. And then I came back and the clerk in training was like, do you have any idea how big this building is? <laughs> I was like, well, wow. really. um, but based on how long you were gone, I'm going to imagine pretty damn big. So I did obtain it and I booked it here as quickly as I could and ripped open the package while I was sitting at a red light because, you know, I'm That's waiting for something. Really, I pre-ordered it months ago and immediately put on this t-shirt. <laughs> I love that for you. Um, That's the compensation for not even getting to lay eyes on the record yet because it's still packaged. You know what? I'm gonna. I should have thought about that. This. I think this counts as the vibe check. Or yeah, as part of the vibe check. I'm um, all like flustered because I did not expect to be gone that long. Valid. No. I find myself 
in a similar situation with a pre-order, um, or just also in a situation that involves an item I pre-ordered that arrived today that I'm probably going to send back because the quality is really fucking disappointing. Hmm. That sucks. You remember when I texted you about the fact that there were le- there was like a skeleton onesie with the ghost logo on oh, it? Yeah, and I was like, yeah, immediately. Yeah. Not good. No, I'm really sad about it. I was hoping that it would be, like, the best thing ever. Um, but the cut is really fucking weird, and I don't like it. Okay. Which is, you know, not what I wanted to happen. Was Wanted to love it, but this is where we are. So that's probably going back. That sucks. Disappointment. Yeah. Um, but anyway... As far as other updates, one, uh, Power Wolf released a new album on the 26th, and it fucks. Not at all remotely surprising, at least in my humble opinion, because I love those guys. So yeah, go fucking check that out if you haven't. And if you haven't ever like listened to Power Wolf before, man, you are in for a very weird mix of vibes. I hope you have fun. <laughs> yeah, I. it's been a, a big music time of late. Um, because I, well, I went to the record store yesterday, and I was there for, like, hours just picking through records. As one is. Um, yeah. And, you know, I I bought a few, <laughs> probably more than I should have. Sometimes I go there and there's nothing I want. This time there were too many things. But a discovery that I made, uh, so Say Anything, t- said that they were going to they weren't a band anymore as of like five years ago like this is our final album they made this whole big thing about it mm-hmm. as i'm picking through i see a say anything album that i've never seen before <laughs> and uh apparently they're back slay there, yeah there's actually a song in the album called psych <laughs> that's fucking awesome and i haven't listened to it yet but i started to play just the first song um and was immediately hooked because immediately was like, let's stop breathing and something with the F word. I don't remember. And I was like, I'm in. <laughs> so I feel like I also, really do. I also just found out today that, so this year is the 20 year anniversary of their album is a real boy, which is nice. The first album that anybody counts. Cause the first one is, we don't talk about it. Um, but they're going on tour to play the entire album, and they're going to be in Buffalo on November 13th. That's what Lorna Shore is doing. They're playing their entire album, their entire uh, Pain Remains with Will Ramos. Cool. I'm going to see them in October. Yeah, I haven't, the, I've seen Say Anything Live, but it hasn't been since like 2006. So, yeah. <laughs> no comment. I know, I know. But yeah, that that's, that was real exciting. That is the album that has Every Man Has a Molly on it. Noise. You do know that song, so. I do know that song. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, I got some cool new makeup that I'm really excited about. I found this company called Sunset Makeup, which has, like, they do, like weird colors of things which was very exciting for me so i got like white and red mascara because i feel like that would look sick um and also they do like setting powder in a bunch of different colors which i'm really excited about because i hated always like having to put the like the translucent stuff on whatever i did like skull paint and it would like make the black sections of it look gray so i got Mm -hmm. black black setting setting powder So that I'm excited about. And I also got liquid eyeliner that I'm never going to use on my eyes because I'm fucking terrible at it. I just want to use it to draw like little upside down crosses like on my face. You should use the red mascara for Mothman. You read my mind. I was already planning on doing that. (laughs) Which is going to be in three, wait, what's today? Yeah, three days. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And that, not to get ahead of myself, but I have some things about con crunching for the worsening, but we'll get to yeah. that. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get to the con stuff when the time comes. Um, but I would like to kick us off, or I guess question-wise, 
now that we've moved through all of our various updates. Um, wake up, guys. New sandwich slicing method dropped. <sighs> did you look at it? I did look at it. What did you think of it? I'm upset. Interesting. Explain. I'm kind of not mad at it. It's more complicated than just simply cutting a sandwich in half, and I don't understand what the benefit of it is. I don't know either. Like, here, look, this might not, this might work, this might not. It's basically a sandwich cut into thirds. Yeah, this is a, this is what we're working with here for yeah. uh, anyone who will be listening to this later, audio only. Die. I'm kidding, it will be linked in the description. <laughs> I just, I don't understand. Like, first of all, I'm sure this person is not the first to have done this. Yeah, I'm sure. But secondly, there there is just no reason for it. Except I don't know. I kind of get it. Because I don't think it is annoying. I think... No, it is. You're just, you're just not seeing it. <laughs> I don't know. So... Here, maybe maybe this is something you haven't thought about before. They're different shapes. You got one triangle and two whatever you would call those shapes. I mean, I guess, but would it change your opinion if it was a more standard slice of, like, Wonder Bread sliced in that format? What what difference would that make? I don't it's know. It's never going to be triangles. Be closer to the same shape-ish. My yeah, I, does not support this sandwich. No, I mean, th and this looks pretty standard to me. It's just, it's impossible but just because of the nature of the sandwich. The two lower ones are always going to start with two sides. So I guess the only way to do it is if you, like, take the weird angled part of the bottom pieces and make it a straight cut and then make that top piece go down to the bottom, if that makes sense. So yeah, guess I, guess, I don't know. Here's the thing. I'm kind of okay with this because sometimes I think the amount of like things in your sandwich, like if you just slice it in half, there's like too much happening and like things be falling out of the sandwich. It would still happen with this. I don't know. This I feel like this would just offer more control. I don't think it would. Plus, it, it really bothers me that at least when you cut a sandwich in half, you have two halves that are not just the same shape, but, like, they're the same experience. Because you got your straight edge, you got your top, you know, kind of weird edge. They're the same thing. And this, you have two different shapes, like, two different experiences. Because I feel like eating that top triangle is a fundamentally different experience than the two lower pieces. Like, imagine uh -huh. eating those. I mean, I guess, maybe. Again, like, I really... I'm finding myself rather ambivalent to this. I just... I, I don't like the asymmetry of it. That's what it mostly boils down to. Um, I suppose. I don't know. Also, this feels like a decent halfway between the sort of kindergarten sliced into quarters and the standard just half. Yeah, I, I just think this is wholly unnecessary. Um, but you also have to keep in mind the weird-ass way I eat sandwiches. Yeah, actually, why am I asking you about this? <laughs> I have to eat around the outside first. There is a reason. So I would have to eat the crust off of each of these pieces before eating the middle, because I am a save-the-best-for-last kind of person, and the non-crust part is unequivocally the best part. Because, first of all, crust and eh. but second of all that's where all the good stuff is like where all your good feelings yeah. are. so eat around the crust which is just like a thing you gotta do is eat the crust and then you get to enjoy the rest of the sandwich i don't even necessarily disagree i just i don't know i just don't care that much is also the thing i mean it's not like that's just how i've been eating them my whole life Thank you, Chris. <laughs> there. Look, I can push the button. <laughs> See, there's a logical explanation behind that. Okay. Yeah. 
this um but did you read any of the comments on this post i'm looking at them right now because one person it really bothers me that said uh where is it anna arsonists the diagonal cutting method objectively gives you more sandwich no it doesn't what are you talking about it's magic it makes the sandwich bigger <laughs> see i hate when i, I look understand. i hate when i look in the comments even if it was an objectively good tweet to begin with if it comes from a verified account i hate when i look in the comments and it's all just a bunch of other blue check accounts i'm like god all you fucking idiots really paid for twitter oh yeah that's that's right because it's also just like verified bots I do that enjoy people this. are have created to just like farm engagement and profit off of. I, I enjoy the comment from uh, DJ Dubmaster Flex. Thinking about opening a bondage themed sandwich shop, I would call it BLT DSM. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm down. Bacon, lettuce, <laughs> tomato. Uh, I'm forgetting what the D is, but it's sadomasochism. Is the D domination? It's like bondage, Probably. domination, sadomasochism, I think. Sadism and masochism. Yeah. I think that sounds right. Clearly, I don't partake in very much of that. But in this case, the B is bacon. Yeah. <laughs> and there's also the LT. Um, Let us into yeah, I don't know. I'm really kind of pro sandwich in thirds, and I don't know if I could yeah. really defend myself. Would you ever actually choose to cut it this way? Maybe? I don't know. Uh, this why? is a vibes. It, it's vibes only. It's kind of I the think... unfortunate thing. Bondage, bondage discipline, ah. sadism, masochism. I did not know that. Okay, so it would be bacon, yeah. lettuce, tomato, discipline, sadism, masochism. I like it. That's a sandwich shop I would frequent. Yeah. And all the it... sandwiches have to have, like, weird kinky names. Yeah. It's kind of like the uh, erotic bakery we were talking about on the stream last week. Yeah! We are just <laughs> swimming in business ideas over here. But all of them just involve taking a thing that exists and pairing and it making with, it like, worse. sex stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And that's you what, know, all that's what we're here for. Making each other worse <laughs> since 2020. That's right. Hobgoblins, which I was listening to a pod today and I heard they referenced Hobgoblins. I'm like, what are the odds? They're haunting um, me. Do we have any further so ugh, further thoughts on the sandwich slicing? I mean, I could talk about this for the whole pod. <laughs> like, I don't think are, we have time for that. Huh, but are, are there certain types of sandwiches that lend themselves better to being cut into thirds? For example, see, often when I get a like a turkey club, like in a restaurant mm -hmm. or whatever, especially because like you got the extra slice of bread there, she's thick. I have received that sliced into thirds like this, and again, I think that works. What about like burgers? Because somebody in the comments did actually mention burgers. Because sometimes they're like huge and messy, you know. You gotta cut them. No, I already came came. I, actually, the sandwich thing we can do for our theoretical freeform podcast. I came up with the name for the freeform podcast. Oh, Whatever happens, that. happens. First episode is gonna be me and Kyle psychologically torturing Nick by talking about some pretentious Criterion film while he drinks, and then he has five minutes at the end to bully us before we cut the feed. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he said he couldn't do that. We're I, we're making him. He doesn't get a choice. That's his fault for not being here. Just to ambush Again. him. Again. Yeah. Just tell him it's going to be something else. And then, uh... <laughs> be like, yeah, come, come discuss this thing with us. And then meanwhile, has somebody sneak into his home and, like, disable his microphone somehow? I like it. I don't know how that works. <laughs> He's gonna see this when he edits the episode, so... Well, he also still just doesn't get a choice. The decision has been made for him when he was not present, just like the decision was made for him uh, regarding Mac and me. 
that's true. Anyway. Um, so Kyle stumbled across something on TikTok and shared it with me. And I have not stopped thinking about it. It is a clip of an episode from the HeadGum Podcast Network, which I've never heard of before in my life, but they seem rather well established, seeing like just based on the little clip that will be linked for everybody. But um, so this is a would you rather, and the would you rather, or not necessarily even a would you rather. Okay. So would you take this deal? Would you take this deal? Yes, that is a much better way of putting it. So the deal is that you either have to smoke one cigarette per day or you have to take a shot of whiskey before noon every single day for a year. And if you do that, you get a year of fluency in any language. Discuss. No. I don't know, man. I think I might. Probably the whiskey thing. Yeah, that's why, like, I think there's two sets of like, questions here. That like, I can... Yeah. That, at least, I'm not getting addicted to nicotine over yeah. the course of a year. Yeah, that's why, again, I think there's two separate questions of, like, first of all, would you take the deal? And second of all, if you did, which of those things would you choose? Would I take it? Possibly. Probably. You know what? If I was to plan, like... A, I would think about this. I would plan like a year of just like nonstop traveling to a bunch of different places, like put that in like 2028 or whatever, and then have 2027 be the year where I like, I do the thing to receive this ability. I thought they were saying you get to be fluent in one language. I would have to rewatch the clip, and if I do yeah. that right now, we're going to get copyright claimed. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that the phrasing was like, um, it, do this and you can be fluent in any language. So I think that phrasing of any is a little ambiguous. Because it doesn't... Okay, so maybe it, it, or it any is just one. But even then, I would just, I would just plan to have a good time wherever for like a year yeah i don't i don't think this is just really applicable to my day-to-day -day life there aren't a lot of instances where i really need to speak another language like it or nice, you could pick but... a language that like a bunch of people in different places know so like if you speak french you could go to like you're going to find someone who speaks French in a lot of different countries, like France, Belgium, various other places in Europe. People often learn French as a yeah. second language. So, like, you could get around in a lot of different places by picking something like that. But it kind I've of opens also, up your potential travel destinations. I've been to France. <laughs> My French is terrible. I mean, you, know, you, don't, you yes. don't need it. Basically, I think the convenience or benefit that you would get from being able to speak the language of a place that you visit, it's just not worth the negative health implications. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, if I really probably. want to know language, I'll try to learn it. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it takes a lot longer that way. I probably won't be good at it. Like I did use Duolingo for French before I went to, to France. Although I did take it in college, I just forgot everything. It happens to the but, best of But yeah, but if you need, if you really need to learn a language, you will learn a language. If you're just going somewhere to visit, you don't really need it. It can be you helpful. Think, you're right, but I'm also answering this as a person who needs to be perfect at everything. And if I'm not, I want to set myself on fire. Yeah, no, that's... It's a horrible way to live your life. I do not recommend it whatsoever, but... Yeah. I mean, you're still not going to be perfect because you're, you're still going to be yourself saying stuff that yourself would say and, you know, people are... Well, people. I mean, yeah. I don't people know. are so weird in every language. Maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't, but if I'm going to, I'd definitely not the cigarettes. 
Yeah, it, yeah. So I, I'm a definite wouldn't take the deal, uh, but if I did, it would definitely be the whiskey. Because yeah, it's a shot of whiskey before noon. You might get a little buzz off of it, but it's not going to last forever. Yeah. No, it'll it'll wear off, and yeah, your liver's not going to be a big fan of it. But if you're not somebody who's already an alcoholic from drinking, it's not going to turn you into one. Yeah. So versus. <laughs> the cigarettes could be a slippery slope. You start off with one a day and then you're addicted and then you start smoking more and more and then now you're a smoker. This is true. So yeah, I think it's it's a pretty easy one for me to answer for some reason. Just like, nope. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, and finally, I have our wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the banner first. Oh, god damn it, we don't have a banner. Whatever. Um, asshole of the week which i will now read for just take me to the app stop making my life difficult why does the google docs app like hate you for using it because it can thank you um okay Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Um, so, am I the asshole for not remembering my trip to Thailand? This has already been judged, setting that aside. I'm 37, and up until last year, I have never left my home state of Victoria, Australia. I grew up very poor, and it was only until my early 30s I started making okay money. Until then, I had never been on a holiday or a vacation. The concept is foreign to me. I have a lot of hobbies, Guitar, archery, war games, which I'm wondering if that means like World of Warcraft or like some form of online game. Uh, laser tag and cooking. My wife, Lucy, of three years, is not an avid traveler, but she has been to Thailand, New Zealand, and Colorado. She what a weird, mix. That... weird mix, but whatever. Uh, she proposed that we go to Thailand for a two week vacation. Now, if I go somewhere out of my regular zone, it needs to be for something very specific. Just going to somewhere and wandering does nothing for me. There has to be a goal in mind. When she proposed, I got nervous. I knew that just going to a place for the sake of going there would be boring for me. Her itinerary was mostly go to different cities and see the sights. At the time, I trusted that she would find something for me as she is much better traveled than I am and knows me. Parentheses, I should have suggested a food tour in hindsight. So we went, visited a few cities and towns, I ate as much as I could from whatever dodgy street vendor I could find, and we went back home. Problem is, I remember sweet fuck all about it. I didn't really enjoy it. It was just a louder Victoria with more Thai people. I didn't complain. I put on my best face and got through it because it was important to her. The problem arose when we went out to dinner with friends. One asked me what my favorite parts of the trip were. I just said the food, and my wife asked me what my favorite city was. I froze. I couldn't remember any of the names, and I said, Pattaya, parentheses, my coworker goes there. We didn't go to Pattaya. My friend then said another city. I agreed that the food was good there. Well, apparently we didn't go there. I said, since it was last year, I had a bit of trouble remembering the trip. This upset my wife. On the way back home, she ripped into me and said I didn't appreciate how much effort she put into the trip. Why can't I remember something this important? I don't think I'm the asshole. It's not my fault the memory has just faded off. It sucks knowing that I can't connect with people about travel either, since apparently it doesn't register with me. Am I the asshole? Resounding fucking yes. You sound insufferable. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <sighs> to me, I is wrong with you? More than 98% the asshole. Because, I mean, so I absolutely agree with a lot of the, the comments that, yeah, I mean, clearly it was important to her. She put a lot of work into this and he should have made an effort to like be involved yeah. with it. Where my 2% my comes in is I have definitely had that experience before where there were things I just did not want to do, but I did the thing because it made somebody else happy and then I was just miserable the whole time. Like, I know that feeling. 
And, you know, despite your best effort, if it just doesn't stick because it's not something, you know, that you're really not enjoying, like, I get that a little bit. I mean, I think he went about it in a really asshole-ish way. And I don't know, here's my thing. Maybe I'm just thinking about this from a person who, again, I really love going places. And I, for, I haven't gotten to do that since 2019. And I don't know when I'm going to be able to get to do that again, because everything is fucked. But, um... What the fuck do you mean? You had the privilege of visiting a bunch of towns and cities in another country, and you don't remember jack shit. Yeah, I mean, but that's the thing. It's not. It's not. I can't believe I sound like I'm uh, trying to defend this guy, but like, it's it's not for everybody. Some people really don't like traveling. And here's the thing: maybe it isn't for everybody. But one, clearly, this mattered to this guy's wife. So be way fucking nicer about that. Yeah. And again, just the remember, like, you don't remember anything. N nothing appealed to you the entire time. There, oh, sure. there are two ways that I sort of identify. One, I have the worst possible memory. Like, it is not good. I have had people claim that we did things, and I'm like, I don't think we ever did that. I have no recollection of whatsoever. And then they showed me pictures. <laughs> of that thing occurring. And I'm like, I don't know how things just don't stick in my brain. Um, so I, I I think maybe part of me is a little sympathetic because of that. Like I have been the person who felt bad and it's not that I didn't care. It just didn't stick for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm referring to one specific instance when I was in college. My friend was like, yeah, you took me to this place. And I'm like, I didn't take you there. But she had photo proof. And she was like my best friend. Like I have no idea how I didn't remember it. But anyway, mm -hmm. the other thing is um, where he, he mentions that if he goes somewhere outside of his regular zone, it needs to be for something specific, not just going to somewhere and wandering. That's me with the swimming pool. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, I have to have a specific thing to do. Otherwise, I'm like, I don't know what what the point is. What am I supposed to do? So I get that part, but I don't know. This just this pisses me off so much. Yeah, I mean, and just again, I cannot imagine the embarrassment his wife must have felt sitting there in front of all their friends and learning that her husband in, did not remember the trip she had like worked hard to plan for them at all. And it's not even that I would want to melt into the floor. It's not that he didn't it's not just that he didn't remember things but then he lied yeah like to cover it up which is also mm -hmm. a very shitty thing to do and again to be clear i am not at all trying to defend this guy <laughs> it's complete assholery I'm just saying that i i see understand a couple of aspects no oh my god i would be but, so embarrassed but also the way that he writes about it he sounds like a child yeah. You know, it's like, um, where did he put it? Uh, oh, man, it's, this is actually semi-long. It's hard to find things in Yeah, here. a little bit. But um, kind of mentioning, like, uh, I didn't complain. I put on my best face and got through it because it was important to her. Yeah, fuck Just, you. But, yeah, I mean, how could you not at least remember the name of one city? Like, that's wild. Yeah, and also just the, like, I trusted she would find something for me. Like, you're 37. Yeah. You're a grown adult. You can find one thing that you want to do that you can tell, even if you're not planning it, even if you're that fucking incapable, tell her so she can add it to the list. Like, clearly, if she enjoys planning anyway, like, enjoys planning trips, being like, okay, we're gonna do this, this, and this, just be like, hey, we had this. I mean, You're he did- a grown man. It, it did say that he should have suggested a food tour in hindsight. But, I mean, so. even, but even that, like, yeah, there's a little bit of missing context. Like, maybe the wife is just the kind of person who loves planning things and getting into the details. Like I'm one of those kind of people. I will, mm -hmm. um, I tend to overschedule trips. Cause again, I have to be doing something. I can't just go to a place. 
and this is the beach. But uh, so if it's one thing if that's something she enjoys doing, but if it's something that is work to her and he's just like, ah, I'll let her do it. I'll tell her what to plan for me or make her guess at what to plan for me. Like, you should. And yeah. also, I don't know, maybe I'm just like particularly annoyed by this as a person who was at one point dating somebody who loved to remind me that like, oh, you know, I don't like this, but I'm doing it for you. It's like, if it's that big of a fucking deal, don't even go. Yeah, it kind of like ruins it if you say that. Yeah. Generally, when you're doing something for somebody because you know they like it, even though you don't, if you tell them, hey, I'm doing this thing, even though I don't like it, I'm doing it for you, that's just going to make them feel bad. And then what's the point of going along yeah. with it in the first place? Yeah. Or even like finding it, like, or even like this, like finding out afterwards that like, oh, I hated it, but I did it for you. It's like, oh, okay. So like, I have all these like great memories of us doing this thing together and you were fucking miserable the whole time. Like, thanks. Yeah. But then what if he had told her at the time he was miserable? Like, I don't know. That's, I mean, this is all, but this, I don't know. This is just such an immature oh, yeah. view of the world. Even if, like, you do have to be a person who, like, goes somewhere to do something. So find something to do. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm also just imagining, but, like, imagining yourself in that position. So imagine that you're doing a thing for a person that is something, it wasn't your idea in the first place. You didn't want to do it. It's not something you enjoy. And then you go and you're miserable. Do you tell that person or not <laughs> no right and so in a way him not mentioning it you know that he didn't have a good time that part i at least get it's the handling of it afterward of the like oh i'm gonna try to lie about things and you know because you can say like oh my memory is terrible without saying i i hated this trip <laughs> yeah, no, I, again, if I, I would want to melt into the floor. Yeah. If I was sitting there listening to my husband lie about places that we went because he doesn't remember our vacation at all. Also, again, two full fucking weeks? Like, if you, for, like, I can honestly kind of understand maybe forget, like, oh yeah, we did do that day trip or whatever, but like, you have to get a passport and a visa and get on a plane. Like, Nothing about that stuck for you? Oh, I would be so I would be so fucking mad. Yeah, I mean the the way I sort of picture their trip is that she had put together this itinerary, she knew all the places they were going, she figured out the travel, and he basically followed her around like a little kid in a grocery store and then just ate whatever food he could get his hands on and never paid attention to any of the details. Yeah. That's the way I, I imagine the trip went. So if he literally never paid attention to anything because he just assumed she would figure it all out, that's probably why he doesn't remember things. But, you know, even if you don't enjoy it, pay minimal attention. Like, yeah, because I feel like even if it's something you don't want to be doing, it's not enough to just simply be present. You also have to, like, engage a bit, you know? Like, if, for example... I'm just like a thing you love musicals, right? So if I went to a musical with you and I secretly hated it, didn't want to be there or something like that. And I'm like, oh, I have to sit through this. I would still try to like, oh, so what do you like about this particular musical? You know, you engage. Unlike some others I know, <laughs> not my ex. <laughs> yeah. So like minimal engagement. What do they talk about the whole time? You know? Yeah, for, like, this just, it blows my goddamn mind. And maybe I'm just fucking mean, but this infuriates me. I, I, I'd also like to reiterate that I am not trying to defend this guy. I am playing no, devil's no. advocate because this is fighting with friends, and I'm trying to find... Find the fight. To support the other but, side. Yeah. No. Th this person was judged asshole by read it wholeheartedly agree maybe i am mean but there you have it essentially that's a good uh point there chris look i 
put it up there. Yeah, like if it's somebody you care about yeah. and they are enjoying a thing, like you think that would make it enjoyable for you. Like I yeah, love it. Maybe when... be like, aw, like my wife is happy. That's nice. I love it when my friends and family get like so excited about something, even if it's something I don't care about at all. It's like, I'm glad you're having a good time. You know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You don't have to care about the thing. You have to care about the person who cares about the thing. And clearly you are showing that you don't care that a person that you are supposed to care about very much is having a great time. Yeah. If if even that made zero impression upon you in any way whatsoever, what are you doing? What are you here for? Like, why are you here? Yeah. So... Oh. Excellent point, Chris. Thank you for adding your hot take. Yeah, yeah, I think it, what it boils down to is, like, good that you tried to do a thing with her that she enjoys, mm -hmm. but everything else about it was bad. <laughs> yeah, like, that was, that's the only point in your favor, and, and then I'm taking away points for everything else. So instead of having the one point, you have, like, negative 50. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This just, oh, this sent me into a rage when I saw it. I was like, hmm, I know what we're talking about. <laughs> anyway. um, You can't pick ones like that that are very clear, because then you want to argue the, the obvious response, and that puts me in the position of trying to find the other side of it. Sometimes I also think it's just fun to rip into someone on the internet. Yeah. Again, maybe I'm mean. Yeah, no, I, I try to find the nuance. I try, anyway. And I appreciate that. Um, anyway, would we like to do the worsening? Because I feel as though, just knowing us, there's going to be going to be a decent amount, I think. I definitely have a couple of things. You are, without doubt, the worst pirate I've ever heard of. Listen, cue ball, you're only making it worse. Thanks, that even makes it worse. It's worse than you know. It usually is. Do we I think sit and listen to this each week? That's or... the worst goodbye I've ever heard. <laughs> we have to reflect on how much worse we've gotten. During that. <laughs> Just during the length of that sound effect. I earned my producer that. cred for the week. Thank you, sir. Yes, you have. Um, the con crunch is so very real. Uh, mm -hmm. Three days. Three days. Exciting, exciting. But I got so much done today, and I'm very proud of myself. Uh, eh. I finished my little redo of my violence feed mask, which I'm very proud of. Uh, came out much cleaner this time, I think. Mm -hmm. Got those little gold-like scrapbooking tabs. Mm -hmm. to be like the rivets instead of just painting them on and I think those turn out great uh, the inside is so much cleaner as well because I instead of just putting netting like over the eye holes on the inside I attach them to the little foam pieces here and then just stuck it down so I'm so happy with how this turned out and I cannot wait to wear it again or do this cosplay again with the new mask. And also, um, for anyone who will be attending Mid Hudson Comic Con, my old mask will be for sale. So if you want it, come and get it. But aside from that, gently tossing those out of the way, I did some things for my uh, sexy Mothman cosplay. My moth helmet has lights now. The eyes glow red, which, man, you really can't see that it's red. I was say, look white on here. Odd. It's red, I promise. But, yeah, I'm very excited. And also, I put little pieces of foam in here so that I could, so that the feathers for my little mothy feelers will stand up <laughs> more, uh, so that they won't, like, flop over when I'm moving around, I guess, is a better way to put it. But yeah, I'm... I'm very excited. You. Uh-huh. You better not be eating those lights. 
No, we're just keeping them company. So yeah, I've been doing so much cosplay stuff and I'm really, really excited. It's gonna be mm, fun. And uh, Fallout help. Still. Still, it <laughs> will not let me go. Much like Ghost is not, but just chokehold. Help. Violent. Yeah, you are a violence fiend. <laughs> um, anyway. So that really is essentially, like, that's kind of it. Just con stuff and video games. Nice. <laughs> what do you got for us, Bestie? Just hang out in silence for a minute. Um... Yeah, I mean, I've largely just been preparing things. Um, I'm making worms on a string, which I've seen. Oh, you, you have sent me on multiple yeah. occasions, and man, oh man, do I love those little guys. Yeah, man, the, the amount of time I spent staring at an actual worm on a string and, like, trying to analyze its every shape and, like, size of the shapes and trying to figure out how I can better reproduce that with yarn. Yeah. So I, yeah, I made some modifications that I think made it look more like a worm on a I was string. a fan. I have, I have seen those modifications firsthand and I think they look freaking awesome. Yeah, I think the reason the nose was too thick originally is because it is a pain in the ass to make it that small. Especially with, uh, that is chenille yarn? Velvet yarn? Something along those lines? But it's very soft and fuzzy, and it's hard to see anything. You're the expert, not me. Uh, not of this kind of yarn. The fancy yarns. This is not fancy yarn. We don't we don't use synthetics in the fancy world. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm having a good time with that. Here, look at my. Uh, this is close enough for show and tell. It's a basket of dino nuggets. Oh my god, I love it so much. <laughs> I've got uh, stegosauruses, I've got brontosauruses, and I've got, yeah, rexes. And oh I my god, I love them. Made this basket liner yesterday. <laughs> it's so cute. So, yeah, pretty, pretty jazzed about that. Yeah, I got, um, yeah, um, but I uh, had, still haven't done anything with my resin printer. I've made a lot of changes. I, um, you can see I actually have new, new curtains back there, two of them. The other ones didn't block enough light. Gotcha. I get different ones. Uh, and I got an enclosure for my 3D printer that is, like, there's a big difference between looking at the measurements and actually seeing the thing. Cause like, I knew how big it was gonna be. I get inside of it. I could climb in there and take a nap. <laughs> it is very large. Um, but it is over there. I had to get an extremely long hose to go to the window because there was just nowhere back there I could make it for. Love that. So that'll that'll be a good time, but it's probably gonna have to wait till after mid-Hudson because I got too many other things to worry about. Who knows? You do be like that sometimes. Maybe I'll pull out a cosplay at the last second like I did for the last Saratoga. <laughs> Exciting. Just randomly produce it tomorrow. I have no idea what it's going to be. Um, probably just have to recycle one. I mean, I'm... No, I'm not recycling both days, but I'm sure there will come a con in the near future where I will be recycling both days because my cosplay closet is getting kind of impressive, if I, mean, I do say are... so myself. You are semi-recycling at least both days. Because the Violence Fiend mask, I mean, you've been the Violence Fiend, and you're yes. getting rid of the old one. Yes. Or trying to, so. The Sexy Mothman is new, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know why my brain was... Yeah. Because I did Vessel twice. Yeah. Well, my big printer has decided to be a bitch again. I don't know Rip. what its problem is now. I tried to print the backing for our podcast sign five times? 
Ooh, the most recent one's still sitting on there because I got pissed and just turned it off. But yeah, because my big printer's right. It there. happens to the best of us. But it got like chewed up. I don't know how well this comes through. I don't know what. It's like all chewed up. No idea. No idea why I did this. This is a, a new problem. For those that don't have 3D printers um, and are thinking about getting them, you're going to spend way more time like troubleshooting than you ever will printing. <laughs> that tracks. <laughs> it's just like, it's constant. Um, but nearly every problem boils down to one of three things. So, you know. Oh, here's technically kind of another way that I'm worse. I overestimated my abilities again. <laughs> mm. Which I texted you about. Uh, when some of the things that we were planning on selling at our table at Mid Hudson, oh. I forgot that it takes time to cross stitch. It sure does. It sure does. So, um, patches will be coming, patches and bookmarks will be coming at the next Saratoga Comic Con. <laughs> I was thinking like, oh yeah, I can bang out a bunch of little like pride flag patches, no problem. It's just a bunch of little stripes. And like, it is. But as I was doing it, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Which is it's fine. Not... I have more than enough stuff. I got a bin full of loaf cats and octopuses over here. <laughs> yeah, I've got bracelets and chokers, which again, some pre-made, or I can make you a custom one if you don't see anything you like. And also, um, I've got that mask I'm going to be selling. And also, I've got some vinyl that I'm just like, if you want it, fucking give me 20 bucks. As in records? Yeah. Interesting. Just some things that I have repeat copies of. Hmm. Oh, I, I do have a DVD copy of Holy Grail that I could offload. Yeah, there you go. Because I have it on oh, yeah. DVD and Blu ray. Yeah. yeah. Why not? So. Yeah, but hopefully, um, I can get this this jerk here to be working again to print the display for your bracelets because uh fingers crossed that's been in the queue but this little bitch hasn't been working all week and i have disassembled parts of it and adjusted and calibrated and yeah i refer to it as a bitch a lot maybe that's why it doesn't like to work i'm, I'm too rude to it it senses your contempt <laughs> i'm kidding i love you good printer and the small one takes too long. It just takes way mm. too long. Well, I, I mean, yeah. we'll we'll figure it out regardless. Yeah, but at least I already got a bunch of stuff printed before it started so, being a bitch again. Yeah, um, my excitement is mounting and will continue to mount for the next like two days. Yeah, I've also been buying a just a shit ton of records because I got a new record player stand that holds, I forget how many records. And I'm like, oh man, now I have all this space I got. <laughs> oh so. yeah, the copy of the Right Here Right Now soundtrack I ordered arrived and it has like a little slip mat that looks like ye old like film reel cans and it has like, and it looks like it's someone like wrote Right Here Right Now on it with like masking tape. They had a bunch of that record at Record Archive yesterday. Yeah, because they released it, and then they had the, like, ah, go leave offerings for Sister Imperator's funeral. Which they had a whole altar at the record store as well. Right yeah. when you open the front door. Fuck yeah. Because mm -hmm. they've always um, beloved. had a mask there of one of the papas. I, I can't tell them. Apart. Yes, yes, sometimes, yes. Sometimes I, I feel like I, I remember, and then I just, I don't. Cause like I know I know the face because you cosplayed as that one. No, I did you, not. You did. I know exactly what you're talking about. That is not him. It's close though, right? They're, the makeup's similar. Yes. And I have some theories as to why that is, but that's veering way too far into my own personal head canon. Because I was gonna guess like Terzo. You're yes. See, you did this, is, this is exactly what we were talking about earlier. Like, ghost is not my thing. But also, look how love. fucking not difficult it is. Yeah, but it's something this you This is love, the blanket statement to, to everybody. Care mm -hmm. about your people's things. Yeah. I don't listen it to their costs, music. I don't 
zero dollars. All my knowledge I have is from listening to you talk about this thing you enjoy. So I'm insufferable. <laughs> but yeah, they had this whole altar and they had the that mask on like a dump like a mannequin or something up front too, like nice. life size, which was it's, it's like right when you open the door, so it's very jarring. Hell um, yes. One other very brief thing that's probably gonna make me a bit worse. I discovered that powdered food is a thing. Like you can drink meals. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking I, about like slim fast. No, I I'm, know. I'm talking about next level, like all of the nutrients. Yeah. I've known that was a thing for like a while. In what form? Like just, just like a shake. I feel like this is probably different than what you're thinking about. I'm not talking about weight loss stuff. No, I'm not either. Hmm. Well, in any case, I was watching a documentary on Netflix, and there was a, like, you know, IT guy, and he was drinking something, and they were like, what are you, what are you drinking there? And he was like, uh, it's, it's Soylent. It's what nerds do instead of eating. Yeah, I've, I've known that that is a thing for a red-hot minute. Well, I have it. And, uh... That tracks. I know! Exactly, Chris. So, it's called Soylent because it's primarily made of soybeans and lentils. Like, that's where the protein comes from. But the number of times I've walked around my home just randomly saying, It's people! Yeah, they knew what they were doing. <laughs> they sure did. Every time Which, I see like, it, I just, that's all I hear. It's kind of fun. Home. Yeah. But, yeah, so I'm... I'm as, for somebody who's as lazy as I am, hates cooking, just wants to be, just have the eating part done with so I can do other stuff, I'm real jazzed about it. Yeah, I could see myself just, like, if I know it's going to be, like, a really busy day. Mm -hmm. That could be helpful. Yeah, I think it's it's going to replace most lunches. Because, you know, you're busy in the middle of the day. Just drink a thing and keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, I kind of feel that. So I'm, I'm pretty excited. It just came yesterday and I haven't really tried it yet, except to like dip. I got the powdered version, you know, more uh, environmentally friendly. I feel that. Well, you'll have to so. report back. Yep. I, I dipped my finger in the powder to taste it. <laughs> it seems like it'll be good. I'm going to put it in some, you're supposed to mix it with water. I'm going to mix it with chocolate almond milk. Ooh. Because I have some of that right now. And it's, it's quite that tasty. That sounds kind of fun. Things. So Ooh, what if I jazz to mix it with like fucking chai mix or something? Yeah. Oh yeah, you can mix it with anything. I'm um <laughs> <laughs> Do we look so like we've ever even seen <laughs> cocaine? <laughs> I don't know, it is white powder. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. But anyway, I'm I'm pretty excited to drink my powdered people. I love that. Fish. Actually, I no, I, I will never forget the first time I walked into a frat house and saw somebody sniffing a table. I lied. I don't think I, unless I'm forgetting something, I don't know if I, I don't think I've ever seen a person. A couple times. Think there were some yet. houses where it was like, if you wanted to do that, that was where you went. Mm. Yeah, I might just refer to the, um, the Soylent as people powder. Incredible. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Be like, oh, uh, what's what you drinking there? People powder. Oh, let me go grab my people powder. I think it works. <laughs> Boom. There we go. Episode title. I love, I love alliteration. People Often powder. is delightful. All right. Um, do we know what we're doing for the stream tomorrow? I thought just four video games and hanging out and yeah, Maybe that's what ourselves. I figured. But did you want to be the one to be gaming? Oh, um, I don't know, because I haven't uh, been playing games. I mean, again, I am happy to continue playing Fallout and having yeah. like explicit indulge my hyperfixation hours. And I'm not just using it as a form of procrastination. 
And I bought Fallout like a month ago, whenever that was. I still haven't played it or anything. You should absolutely change that, but... I have too many hobbies. I have. I, I know have you do, God damn it. It's... I just don't have enough time for all of the things. That's why you have to rotate them off. And also, you know, I do work in the summer. Well, I had meetings today, well. working on, you know, publications. Nerd. <sighs> Nerd for being a published writer? Yes. <sighs> well... It's, this yeah, is coming from another nerd, just in a fine. different direction. But I feel like that's a that's one of the cooler aspects of myself. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah, that. Exactly, Chris. Yeah, like it's it's one thing to be a nerd just, you know, and enjoy a thing, but at least I'm producing something. And uh there are people who know who I am because of it. I'm not just. I'm no, not I know. Here. I could just say the same thing. It's just in a. It's in a different direction, and no one knows that it's me. Well, I'm talking about like. How about how about this? I get invited to do talks because of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people know who I am when I go to conferences. They're like, "Oh, you wrote this thing." Yeah. <laughs> so I I am known for the work that I do. I am them. very happy being known without anyone knowing that it's me. And I would like to keep it that way. Also, my publications are only publications that I have they're going through incredibly rigorous review processes. Vibes alone, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say that's the primary difference. Yeah, that's fair. So, yeah, games on the stream tomorrow. Regrettable reviews this coming Tuesday. We're talking about fucking Space Truckers, which I have yet to watch. And frankly, if you want to watch that and come to the studio with us on Tuesday, fuck it. Guest spot. Maybe. Who knows? Um, but I think that's really it. And let, who else has got stuff coming up? I'm fully agree. <sighs> Big Dumb Monsters okay. Monday. Regrettable reviews. What about summer camp? I don't. That's not this coming week, is it? Uh, it was last week, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Because they they had to move it because of the tomorrow the night. Problems. Okay, yes. Oh. So summer camp tomorrow oh. night. So you can either hang out there on the Big Dumb Monster ah. Switch channel, or you can hang out on our Twitch channel. Whichever appeals to you more. If you're more of a video games person, come hang out with us. If you're more of a book and movie type person, go hang out with AJ. And I'm not sure who the other host is. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My deepest apologies. Our, our lovely producer will supply that information, I'm sure. It's rotating. Oh, okay, oh. cool. So that's not even on me. <laughs> So a lot of people don't know what it is. Who yeah, knows? so go hang out with AJ and whoever the host winds up, uh, the uh, co-host winds up being. Yes, lots of options. All right, as always, thank you for fighting with us, friends. We appreciate each and every single one of you. We'll be back again next week for uh, more chaos and reporting back from the con. We will see you then. Adios. This week's episode of the Fighting with Friends podcast was hosted by Bridget Kelly and Dr. Sarah Brooks. You can find other episodes of the podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, or your other favorite listening platform. Catch us live on Twitch every Wednesday and Thursday. And for ad-free live broadcasts of the show, you can subscribe to our Twitch channels or consider donating to our Patreon for ad-free access to our entire library of past episodes and streams, as well as fun bonus content. Fighting with Friends is a member of the Big Dumb Monsters Podcast Network. Check out the links in the description for more episodes from us and from all of the shows on the network. Thanks for listening!